We're in the arid west. We have a growing population that increases the demand, and we have the uncertainty of climate change at our doorstep. And so it's important that we take all this in consideration as we look at our limited water resources. The Water Trust's main effort is to restore rivers and put water back in places that for a, a number of reasons don't have the water that they might have previously had. And so that improves the ecosystem, improves the fishery, and at the same time, I think it's helped make some of the agriculture operations that have joined these efforts more productive. We rely on production, we've grown grass to support the livestock, which is ultimately the bottom line for the ranch. So years like this where we have you know, dry, dry springs and, and hot, dry summers, and it's tough to keep production on the hay meadows to where we can sustain the herd through the winter. The water rights are the most critical part of the ranch. Some of the criteria were that there wasn't any risk to losing any portion of our water right. I started talking to the Water Trust. I'd learned more about different options that were out there. This agreement was set up where we would turn off our irrigation and leave it in the stream for three years at a 10-year period. And we would be compensated for the loss of production, depending on how long the water was left in the creek and, and what was foregone as far as irrigation goes. It was also important to us that as a family as an operation, we remained in the driver's seat. We weren't obligated to do it any one certain year. It was a, you know, more of an open dialogue on choosing the right years that worked for us and made sense for the creek. Since the Colorado Water Trust was able to secure the first 3 in 10 in stream flow lease agreement out of Stagecoach Reservoir, we've been able to utilize that tool several times again. Then we also were able to come to the table and work with the Water Trust to come up with other tools and solutions to help bring that water further downstream. So when we get into a drier year and we see that the Yampa River is starting to drop through town, we convene as a city with the Upper Yampa Water Conservancy District, with the Division Engineer's Office, sometimes with CWCB and Colorado Parks and Wildlife Aquatic Biologists. So it's really been an iterative process, but it's great. The partnership has been built thanks to the work of the Colorado Water Trust. One of the things that the Water Trust has gone out of their way to do is to respect Colorado water law. That means working with the senior water rights in a particular stream. Also to understand their responsibility if they end up acquiring some of those senior uh, water rights through a lease or through a donation or through an outright purchase and how that impacts the other water rights. Then when you look at the actual engineering and the flow of the water and the timing of the water and advise people uh, accordingly. I think some of the tools that are available today may have not have been available 20, 30 years ago. And just with the increasing pressures on water demand and you know some of the variability we've been seeing in the last 20 years, and these tools are, I think, are going to allow ranchers to continue their operations in the future. To me, it's an it's a no-brainer. I think I would tell other people that want to partner with the Water Trust that you can trust them. I think that you can be really open with your ideas and thoughts and fears and concerns, reservations, and they'll keep that information confidential if you want them to. But at the same token, they will look for a solution that works best for you and your operation. The only certain thing is it doesn't look like we're going to have a whole lot more water and probably somewhat less water in the future. And so it's important that we develop these relationships on how, how do we share this limited resource and, and still maintain the quality of life we have in Colorado.